One of the um, sections that we've been doing for the Armstrong, My Dog and Me, we've done so many things that you've had an opportunity to see probably in the last year and a half. And we've done traditional things, and we've done dentals, and we've done a spade of a dog, and we've also done examinations and things such as that. Uh, one of the ones you may have seen recently was a program that we did at Greener Pastures, which explained a little bit about different diagnostic methods that can be used. But today we're at Connie Lake Vet here on 322, and I have with me Dr. Becky Stanton and also one of the technicians, Andrea, give me a to it, tell me again what the last name is. Victoria. Vic Victoria. I couldn't remember that, so I just might let her explain it to you. Um, anyways, we're here, and um, this happens to be my veterinarian clinic where my dogs come, and they're up for, I'm sometimes able to twist an arm and get them to help me with these things. But we want to give to you today an alternative means of treating conditions in dogs. So keep that in mind. We're not saying do this in place of, we're saying do this in addition to. So that we're not just suddenly thinking this is the cure-all, this is one option that people have. So we're going to start by letting Dr. Becky give you some basic information concerning the use of lasers. Well I guess one of the first things to understand is that there's different types of lasers out there. Okay. There's um, several different classes of lasers and lasers is a term that a lot of people have heard out in just the general public and there's everything from the lasers that are in the checkout lines at the stores to laser pointers um, and then as we graduate up we go into um, certain types of medical lasers mm -hmm. after that and the laser that we use um, there's two lasers that we use in veterinary medicine both of those are actually a class 4 laser um, they differ based upon the wavelength that that we have um, the first laser that we encountered was a surgery laser and that is a is a higher wavelength than what our therapy laser is both mm -hmm. of those are a class 4 laser um, and the different wavelengths and the different wattages that they have allow them to, to penetrate the tissues differently and also how those beams are focused. So the, the surgery laser intended is for cutting and making incisions, whereas the therapy laser is intended for wound healing, uh, decreasing inflammation, um, decreasing pain, increasing range of motion in our pets. And sometimes both is, or can be used. You use the laser as far as the cutting, as far as the surgery. And then to help with some of the healing, you could then turn to the other type of laser? Correct. A lot of times on um, dogs, for example, a routine spay procedure, mm -hmm. we will um, use a surgery laser for that procedure. And as we go okay. through with that, that allows the um, um, less pain and swelling to um, occur with the surgery, but then also as the surgery is progressing also decreases bleeding and then after the surgery we will then often reach for the therapy laser at that incision site for the skin and for maybe the muscles that were involved to decrease the, the pain, swelling and inflammation that's felt by that patient. In, in most practices now would that be done as an option for a person to have the um, I guess all of us have. Well, do they actually do any more of the surgery using something other than the laser? Do you ever use there, a scalpel there, to do it? There are um, certain procedures where we only will use a scalpel okay. blade. Um, sometimes some of the orthopedic procedures um, on occasion, it just it depends on, on what's going on in that animal and the specific need. But for most routine surgeries um, and routine procedures, we are using a laser surgery and then often we'll follow up with the therapy laser afterwards. And that's usually an option given to the owner. Do you want to do this also? I mean, it, I know different vets could do it different ways. It can be done okay, differently. Um, one thing that we're, <coughs> we're, try, we're doing at this point is with every spay that's done that we are using um, laser therapy afterwards on those animals. Mm -hmm. and, and we do that because we believe it's the best medicine out there. It's okay. the best thing for that animal to, to help to speed the recovery time, speed the healing, and decrease the pain that that animal is feeling okay. as a result of that surgery. Um, there are a few surgeries where we would not use the laser therapy on, and those would be um, if we're doing a, a, a lump removal on a dog. Okay. And um, it, the laser <clears throat> should not be used with anything that is a, a cancerous type of a mass. And so if we don't know what kind of lump that was, then we're not going to use the laser uh, for that in particular. Okay, let's go back to one other thing now. Um, when your dad was down here as a veterinarian and I had my collie who, I, I guess Cody must have been 12 or so, and we opted at that time because laser wasn't available, but we ended, I ended up doing acupuncture. One of the things your dad suggested at that point was that before we could even do that and decide whether or not Cody could be a candidate for that, we needed to do x-rays and do some other tests. So one of the things that you do to decide, is this dog a candidate or is this dog not? 
And it, it depends on the condition that we're lasering, but when we're talking about mobility issues or potential arthritis in dogs, mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely want to try to have a set of x-rays because I want to make sure that I'm treating the sites that we need to, site, to, okay. to treat. Um, if it's we have arthritis in the back, but we're only treating the hips and knees, we're not necessarily going to have a successful response to that case. So in other words, if, if I have a dog, I don't just walk in off the street and say, I want my dog to have laser surgery or laser therapy, you would normally, they would be a, a client here or a client at another place uh, if they were doing the same type thing. And then you would examine the dog, take the necessary tests, right. give that to the owner as far as an option. Right. right. Gotcha. One of the other reasons we already talked about not using lasers on any types of tumors, and, and on occasion we'll have an older patient that has a tumor in his bone. And so that's an instance where that animal is limping, and that's an instance where I wouldn't ever want to use a laser on that to treat the pain and inflammation because that could make that disease progress more. Okay, well good. Now I think we've got a pretty good handle on what this is. And now Adrian, are we take, turning to Adrian now? Are we still going to, what's our next thing we want to discuss? I think there's a lot as far as um, maybe what's involved with coming in, what's a typical laser therapy session like. Okay, and let's do that. some safety precautions and things that we take as well. Sounds good. You want to start that or Adrian, you're ready to start that? Okay, well as far as for safety reasons, um, we have these different glasses that everyone um, is required to wear. If a client wants to, elects to stay with the laser session, then everyone has to wear these. It protects our eyes from um, any reflective of the la laser energy. And also, which I've, we also protect the pets if they're tolerant. We have these cute little glasses in several different sizes to protect the animals' eyes I can hardly well. wait till we put that. First of all, I can hardly wait till I put the glasses on. But after I put them on and Dr. Becky puts them on and you put them on, then we're going to have the dog. I like this. Yes. It's a little bit better. So everybody's eyes are protected. Okay, we're all protected. And the second thing is um, you don't want to start out with any reflective surface because it is a laser beam and we don't want to reflect it all over the room. So we usually use 100% cotton um, blanket or towel, depending okay. on the The large animals we usually do on the floor, the smaller cats, smaller dogs, we do it on the table with a towel. With a cover or something? Yes. Okay, gotcha. But, um, yeah, we always like to do 100% cotton, just as they recommend for safety. Okay, now when I was down here talking to you about doing this, you were showing me this machine. Explain to everybody what this machine is, and I was amazed by how it actually makes a lot of the decisions for you. It isn't guesswork, it's actually done by computer, right? Right. Yeah, okay. there's um, pre-existing protocols that are already downloaded from the company, um, and that determines what kind of size uh, head we use for the wand and also what type. These protocols were actually established based on um, research that the companies have done in response mm -hmm. to these conditions. So this is something that's been very well um, researched out as far as what it needs to, be to do for specific conditions and to control pain and inflammation in our animals. Well, here's a question. Everybody that would have that particular type of machine would be using this particular dial as far as figuring out how to use the laser for that pet. Do all the different machines have different protocol or are they all basically the same? Um, each of the machines, they have different, there, there's settings that have been established as far as the in dosage, okay. um, which often relates to the wattage and how long it, that, that a, is applied to an animal. Okay. And so that's where the things vary dependent upon our, our animal size and coat color and things there, which is something that's already built into this machine. Because a, a darker skinned animal, a darker haired animal, is going to absorb the laser beam differently than a lighter okay. skinned, thinner haired animal. And those are all things that are built in to help with us get the accurate dose for each animal. And what were the first four choices that were on there? I think you shared that to me the other day. It was what the, uh, I know one of them was the, the color of the fur. Yeah, one right. Of, what are they there? So if, if we do a dog, and then it starts out with the weight, you want to um, choose the size of your animal. So we'll choose a 60 to 80 pound. And then it's body type, coat length, skin color, and coat color. So if you have an overweight dog with a short hair coat and then dark, um, medium skin between light and mm -hmm. dark and also a medium coat length. You plug those parameters in. And then, then gives you the next set of choices. And then okay. it's the next depending on what we're treating. Okay, good. Um, do we want to, uh, what would you like to have us do first? Should we get a dog in here so we can try this? Yes, we're going to do Sophie. She's a six-year-old um, Basset. How do you know? Oh, the Basset. I thought we were going to do somebody else first. But we're doing the Basset first? Doing the basset yes, first. we're doing the Basset okay, first. Then we have a special guest that will be our next Yes. Patient, correct? <laughs> right. Okay, we'll get special attention on that okay. one. While you get uh, the dog, why don't I interview someone who has done this 
and they can give us some idea because it's easy for you and Dr. Becky and myself to stand here and say this is how it do is done, this is what it looks like, and this and this and this. We're going to get someone in, in here that has a dog that comes to you, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to ask, I believe it's John Higgins. John Higgins, correct. From uh, Meadville Senior High School, he's a principal. And we're going to talk to him while you get the basset, and then we will get an idea how the owner actually feels about this. Okay. Okay, Sounds thanks. Good. We've shown you some different things that can be done as far as a laser surgery. We're going to spend a little bit more time showing you that. But I also have found out that um, John Higgins, who is the principal of Meadville High School, correct? That is correct. Is, uh, has do is doing this with one of his dogs. And I wanted you to get a feel for what the owner thinks. It's very, very easy for the veterinarian and for myself and even technicians to stand here and tell you all that is happening. But what makes this so important and makes it something that we want to consider as far as an alternative to our normal treatments for dogs, I wanted to have, give everybody an opportunity to talk with John or listen to John as I interview him, and he can give you some information concerning his dog. So, first of all, let's start. What kind of dog do you have? I have a 12-year-old chocolate lab named okay. Sidney. And we've had him um, for a long time, and he's soon to be 13 years old. And you decide, what made you decide to start the laser? Did you try other things before you tried the laser therapy with uh, the dog? No, I believe it was my wife that looked into it. I don't know mm -hmm. if she saw it on the um, internet or had spoken to someone, but it, it came highly, you know, suggested that, you know, that was a way to go. I first <clears throat> ran into knowledge about it whenever I did a program um, previously on Armstrong up at Greener Pastures because uh, Edie Steider up there was doing that as far as physical therapy. But a lot of vets now are doing a, a much greater range of the use of laser. And that's what I'm interested in now because I have younger dogs, thank God. But as you get an older dog, you want to know what the alternatives are there and something that can help you and make the dog more comfortable. So the, what, may, what, was the, what did you see before that? What were the symptoms that made you say, we got to do something else here? Uh, a couple of years ago, our dog, Sydney was um, you know, diagnosed with um, you know, uh, arthritis in mm -hmm. his back. and, and um, it was pretty severe, and he was getting up there, and he'd injured it when he was about eight years old, uh, pretty bad. And uh, but then the arthritis set in a few years later, and it slowed him down. Um, and you could you could see he was in some pain when he walked and would mm -hmm. get up or lay too long. And at one point in time, it had gotten so bad he'd somehow injured it, and he uh, didn't move for a few days. And um, you know we knew we had to do something. We felt our time with with him was short, and um, you know. Love, you love your dogs. Absolutely, and, uh, and we do. And we, all and do. we were willing to try and do anything mm -hmm. for him. Um, and this, this came about, and um, you know, Dr. Becky Stanton's father had a laser unit up at Possum Ridge, mm -hmm. up, up near New York in Eisenhower schools. And um, we thought we'd give it a shot. Within the first treatment, it was noticeable, the difference. I just can't believe that. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed by that. I think it's wonderful. He was up and running around. Um, he wanted to go for walks again. He, mm -hmm. he played with our kids. I have young children. I have a um, five-year-old son. I have an eight-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And my son's the one that, you know, it, you know, really is there with the dog mm -hmm. and it, it likes to roughhouse. And my daughter, you know, you know will walk him and, and play outside mm -hmm. with him. But um, it was noticeable. One treatment. Okay, so how, many tre how long have you been doing this? Since the first treatment till today, how long has that been? A um, year? Probably... Um, uh, about a year and and um, a year and a half possibly. And my understanding, and I could be wrong, you can correct me, but my understanding is once you about get a to year. a yeah, once you get to a certain level with the laser, then it's almost like a maintenance. Is that what you're on then with your dog? Right. We well, we started out um, with, with Dr. Bob Stanton, who had a machine up there, and it was every week for six weeks, mm -hmm. and I drive him up there, and then you know after those treatments, it was periodical. It was a maintenance mm -hmm. thing. And then we found out that Connie Lake uh, Veterinary Hospital had gotten a laser. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot shorter drive. Absolutely, a lot better so, than driving way up there. So we decided to start bringing them out here. And, and again, it's, now it's maintenance. And, um, you know, he is getting older. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's improved his quality of life. And I swear it's, it, it's, it's lengthened. His One life. quick question. What do you see that makes you say to yourself, I need to call the vet, we've got to go in for another maintenance? He'll... <laughs> It's got to be something that's just really obvious. For, for those of you that are get, getting older, when you lay on the couch too long, you get up and you're a little stiff, you can see that in him. If he lays on the floor and you come home and 
he comes up, gets up to greet you. He's a little stiff getting up, and he'll tuck his tail, which tells us he's a little bit of a little bit of pain, and he's he's ready for a maintenance mm -hmm. call. And um, we call it the spa treatment. It's just uh, you know between my wife and I, it's time for the spa. So yeah. we take him in, and he loves it, and um, and he's happier. You can tell, and you can see it in his face. Do you um, prior to doing that? Did you have him on pain medication too? Yes, he is on pain medication. Still a little bit of that. And too. we okay. yeah we have to and. Um, you know he's you know, he's got allergies, but you know he's on you know um, you know different medications, and don't ask me to name them. No, please. I wouldn't know them anyways. <laughs> but um, he's not in our area. Of but yeah, he does get you know he does get a treatment for pain. But you know if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the laser, I you know I'm not okay. sure if he'd still be around. Well, good. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, honesty and your openness. And the only thing missing would be the dog, but we couldn't do that because you're all dressed up in a suit, so we didn't have to have you. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to run home I, and get them. But at least we've got some good ideas, and hopefully that'll help the public who's watching this get a, uh, an idea from Absolutely. you as to why you made that choice and the big changes that you see, rather than for us just to be talking about the actual procedure. This way, we've got you, and that helped. Thanks. Great. Thank appreciate you so much. It. Thanks very much. <laughs> You are never going to believe what you're going to see. Look at this poor, poor Sophie here. She looks like the World War II uh, Snoopy with her glasses on because we talked about the protection for the dog as far as her eyes are concerned. Sophie's all set. We're also going to show you now something or a way that laser is also used. So I'm going to turn over the knowledge of everything to Dr. Becky, and I'm going to be the garter of the head of the dog. Okay, here we go. Uh, Sophie came to us uh, about a week or so ago with some anal gland troubles, and um, she had had, but she's been diagnosed with uh, an anal gland infection or anal sacculitis, and so we're going to use a laser treatment at this point to reduce the pain, the swelling, and the inflammation um, that she's experiencing as a result of, of the infection that she has. Um, at this point, her infection has also been treated with antibiotics um, as well as getting her anal glands flushed this morning, so other means in uh, treating this disease as well. So. Okay, so now you've already put in all the information. Right. Her size, her coat color, and all those kind of things, her weight, or well, we said size. And mm -hmm. now you're going to begin the treatment. How long will this treatment take? It will be 1 minute and 33 seconds. And it's okay. calling for 7 watts. And um, because this condition, it calls for a non-contact head, which we call as the wound head. So I will not be touching the animal with the head. It will just be the light energy. Um, there is, they have it as red. For, so I can see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But we also said, Dr. Becky, it's going to show up as white probably on this... On, uh, the, on the video, on the video screens and TVs at home. It's the, uh, the lens will pick up a different color of the light beam. Okay, so whenever you're ready. So. Okay. Adrian told me I made a mistake before and I called... What did you say I called you? Andrea. Andrea, it's Adrian, I take that. I really apologize for that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to go real slow, and I'm doing about an inch um, grid back and forth. And I just slowly work up my way up through the area. Now, what does the dog feel here? A little bit of warmth? It'll be a little bit thermal warming. Um, I have my thumb right here, so I can feel what the skin is. Okay. Um, so if it does get too warm, or if I'm staying in one position too long, I don't know about it. Often if a patient becomes um, anxious during it or doesn't want to tolerate the procedure, then that's one thing that we always will double check and make sure we maybe mm -hmm. change our settings and, and uh, still do what we need to to get the right dose in, um, but also make sure our patient's comfortable during that process. While you're doing this, I'm sure that the people that are watching this are looking at us saying, look at those funny glasses <laughs> those three people have on. I so, wish we could turn the camera around because our ca cameraman also has the glasses on. <laughs> so. But he's stepping behind the camera so you won't yeah. get a chance to see that. And what is it, how come it beeps double sometimes? The, uh, the different beeps in the machine are um, based on the amount of uh, wattage that is being emitted okay. at one time. And um, the nice thing about the laser is that it, it, it has those protocols built in. Um, and for this disease, we're treating her for the anal sacculitis, which is that infection in the anal glands. Um, but we also use this for um, like a hot spot or like a, a, a skin infection a lot of mm -hmm. times. And so one of the things that the reasons why the laser changes is that based on those protocols that have been established, but also because um, at different settings and different wavelengths, we, we see different benefits from, from the laser. Um, we've already talked about reducing the, the pain and the swelling, the inflammation, mm -hmm. but at certain wavelengths, it also actually will um, 
decrease the bacteria's ability to survive. It's, it becomes bactericidal, which means it can kill some of those bacteria. So that also helps us in treating our patients. When you treat something such as this, I know you're treating this and because of everything you've been doing. Will this reoccur or you this isn't a maintenance thing? This is more like a, a one shot deal or what? This is this is more of a um, treating the, the acute problem okay. that we have. So okay. it's, this was something that just started a week ago, um, and this is uh, actually her third treatment that she's receiving okay. because her, her main underlying condition hasn't resolved like we had hoped with things. Okay. Um, there are some cases where we just do the laser once, and then there are other cases, um, like maybe you heard with uh, Mr. Higgins and, and Sydney, where it's a repeated uh, dosage and um, going through um, an induction phase where you're, you're doing maybe every other day or every third mm -hmm. day until we see the desired, desired effects and then we go into a maintenance mode where we just maintain um, the level of comfort that they have. Uh, are you doing something else with her now? Am for I doing one? the other one? You're doing anything yeah. else with this one or is, this a, is um, it for Sophie? It's only two minutes. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the other treatment. Um, because Sophie has had her, her problems with her anal glands, she's also having um, created herself a hot spot on the underside of the tail. So we're also going to be Can treating that, that location. Kevin, you're able to zoom in on that a little bit? I'm sure you are. Okay, sounds good. Now we're just doing, you have a different mechanism in your hand. You don't have that um, distance one. That you have yes, um, I, it's still a non-contact head, but however, the wattage did determines which size head I use. Okay. So last one was um, seven watts, this one's four and a half watts, so I went to a smaller head. Okay. Um, I was amazed, and, and I know people, and we talked about this before, Dr. Mm -hmm. Becky and I, I know people that have Newfoundlands. I've had dogs with long fur in that, but I've, knock on wood, I've never had a dog with a hot spot. But I understand that the success rate with the uh, laser as far as the hot spots has been very, very promising. Correct. We've had a, had a lot of patients um, with hot spots, which is that, that inflammation and often some moisture level on the mm -hmm. skin and skin that's very inflamed that have um, just responded very, very well. And that's been one of the things, whether, you know, whether it's caused by an allergy or whether they just started licking an area excessively. Um, but it works very well to treat that. Um, other things that we've used the, the laser to treat, uh, we've, we've kind of mentioned the ear infections, but, you know, dogs, sometimes they get a severe ear infection and the ear is very red and inflamed. Um, and that's something that we can do to kind of give them some immediate relief from, mm -hmm. from that kind of a condition. Um, there's a wide variety of things that we can treat. We, we can, anything from, um, you know, the ear infections to hot spots to um, osteoarthritis and really any condition that we know is causing pain, swelling, and, and inflammation. Um, there's a few things like we've, we've kind of mentioned that we don't use the laser for. Um, one of those being if we, there's a, a cancerous mass that's in that area, um, we definitely avoid laser mm -hmm. therapy at those sites and, and um, you know, if we might be able to use it on a different spot of the body but not at that spot where that, we know that that mass is located at. Um, <clears throat> we've also used the, or excuse me, don't want to use the laser for any animals that are still young and growing and have open growth plates at oh, okay. those sites locally. Um, that's been shown to, to change those growth plates. So we, we definitely avoid it in those animals. Um, and then some of our intact male dogs, we don't use it um, locally on their reproductive organs. Well, uh, talk about this, I, even though the name of our program is My Dog and Me, what about cats? Do it on cats? cats? We definitely do it on cats. We've had um, some really very dramatic responses on cats. We've, um, one of our clients, um, we've, we knew her cat had had arthritis and we've been trying to manage her cat with different medications. And um, there's not a lot of really good medications that we can use in some of our cats as they age. Um, and as a result, they were um, very eager to try the laser therapy on, on, their, on their cat. And um, within a couple of sessions, had noticed some, um, a big improvement as far as her comfort level at home. Um, she began jumping back up on the hamper where she had, you know, hasn't mm -hmm. done that in a long time. Um, and we had also talked where she, they, um, one of the, the signs of pain in cats is that they're not grooming themselves as much. Um, and also that this animal was not allowing uh, her owner to, to groom her and keep her, her coat good. She was very sensitive on her back end where we knew so that the arthritis was. And now she's allowing her owner to groom her and, and is really doing um, wow. much more comfortable in, in general at home with things. And she's, uh, again, in that maintenance level where it just maintains her and keeps her feeling good about once a month where she's coming in for her treatments. Is Sophie done? Yes, Sophie's done. I think done. Sophie's glad. <laughs> I think Sophie wants the glasses off. <laughs> can I take mine off for a moment? Yes, you oh, can. My heavens, awesome. Thank you. But I really, um, I think the picture of Sophie with the glasses on has got to be about the best. <laughs> Sorry, it's Snoopy. Hi, Sophie. Okay, we're going to switch and show you a different dog receiving some laser, and we will do that in as soon as we can make that change. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All 
right, now we've uh, changed our patients, as you can see, and we now have Maggie. And introduce Maggie to us and tell us why Maggie is such an important patient. This is Maggie, and she's a six-year-old Rhymer owner, and she happens to be my dog. And two months ago, she had a cruciate um, knee surgery to repair her ligaments in her left knee. And she's been on regularly um, laser therapy, which she's been doing really well on. Um, and you noticed a big change. Yes, there, definitely. We've been, we started before the surgery and then after the surgery, and it really, really made a difference. Question, why did you start before the surgery? Um, just to start the healing process, get it going. Um, okay. And we also do it on her um, hips and her other knee as well because they were taking all the weight when she was hurt on okay. her left. So we do the right side as well. Well, let's talk about the fact that, first of all, you are now no longer standing up across from me. You are now down on the floor. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, would this be under the category, comfort level for the dog? Yes. Um, usually, we try to make the dog as comfortable as possible, as relaxed, because it makes the therapy session go so much better. Um, larger dogs, like this one, we usually do on the floor. Um, sometimes, you're everywhere. You're all different places, all different um, positions, whatever makes them comfortable. So we can do this. And what's underneath this? Um, it's we just better show that too. Yeah. You, I know they use this a lot in daycares and stuff, but they're just like puzzle pieces that um, come together. And then we just put our 100% cotton over top of it to protect it. it. Well, is there a reason it's 100% cotton and not some other material? Yes, the, um, it's recommended that way um, by the chance that might, other materials might be more flammable okay. than cotton. But. Okay. And because um, this requires a contact head, so we're actually placing the wand right onto it. I'll just take, um, this is just plain regular tap water. We just wet the area down. You're okay, Max. Just to give it, to keep the area cool. And like I've done before with the wound head, I'll keep my finger right there the whole time so I know exactly what the temperature of the skin is. Lay down, please. Maggie, lay down. Maggie says, I'm Thank not too you. sure I want to do this. Stay. She better behave for you <laughs> because she's yours. You can't blame it on anybody now. Yeah. You're doing okay, good. so this is the contact one. Right, it's just a ball. And it's more like a massaging ball as well. Because I just keep going around and massaging around the joint. And I want to make sure to keep the patient's head away from where I'm working as well. Even though they have the um, doggles on, we still want them not to look at us. And why is that? Just to protect their eyes, just okay. in case she moves and the wand, you know, comes up or anything like that. She's not as good as a World War II person <laughs> as that poor. Was that what dog's name? Sophie. Sophie, Sophie yes. was perfect. This one here looks a little out of place. I think those <laughs> goggles look perfect on Sophie. <laughs> The, um, you know, all, all of our patients today are wearing goggles, but not um, every patient will tolerate the, mm -hmm. the protection on the eyes. And on those guys, um, it depends on where we're treating, but we always make sure that they're restrained well enough so that they're not ever going to look directly um, into the laser beam. And if it's something near the face, near the eyes, then they're definitely going to be have those eyes covered. Um, maybe we'll tr put a towel kind of over their head, and they'll tolerate that instead of the, uh, the, the doggles for the protection that way. Here's a question for you. How quickly could damage to the eyes or something like that occur? Would it be almost immediate? Um, it's it, it depending upon the the strength of the, the laser mm -hmm. and also um, the if it's a direct beam or not. Okay. Um, these you know the, the eye protection that we have is all designed to protect against scatter, um, but we're very careful and and one of the. Uh, requirements of these class 4 lasers are is that there's certain safety switches that are built into mm -hmm. them and so when the when the laser is not in use um, with the safety switches is, is off and it can't be turned on unless we have two buttons that make sure that it comes on so it's not inadvertently going to be you know pointed or aimed into somebody's mm -hmm. eyes um, and so it, it's really uh, hasn't been a problem but is something that everybody is aware mm -hmm. of um, one of the things kind of relating to that is that Adrian has been through some specialized training she's been through just gonna um, ask that the, uh, the safety training. Um, if you want to maybe tell us a little bit more about that, Adrian. The three how long did it take, Adrian, and um, tell um, us something about that. Where did you go for it? Or was it online or what? It was all online, and um, it took me about four hours. There's mm -hmm. um, four different sections, um, but it's work at your own pace, which made it nice. But um, I got a certification in um, medical laser safety. Um, 
medical laser basic science, and then um, intro to companion laser and the basic principles of companion did, did laser. Did you tell me whenever I was talking to you the other day that if you had a question or if you weren't quite sure of the condition or how the computer was giving you a readout or whatever, you had someone you could call yeah, that def could give you the information? Mm -hmm. There's definitely there's resources that are out there for us. Um, we do have uh, another veterinarian who has been um, started with the laser you know, a couple years ago mm -hmm. and has been very um, instrumental in the development of some of the protocols. And so that's somebody that we talk to any time that we maybe get something that's not built into the protocols, into mm -hmm. the machine, that we don't have an established protocol for, we kind of call, we get some information from them, and um, we kind of proceed with, with their uh, guidance and, and help that sure. way as well. Um, we were talking before we started this that uh, you were going to laser something on my hand so I could feel what it was like. Yeah, I just, okay. and, and that's that something that um, is, is very safe for, for, for us, um, but just you kind of get an idea that you'll the, feel the ball, and the, the ball is almost kind of equated to like a massage ball, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's round, it's very smooth. Um, most dogs become very relaxed. Uh, we had a, a patient that was in this morning that was being lasered and, and was always a very nervous dog mm -hmm. when it was here. And um, the owner was commenting, well, she's not as nervous today. I think it's because she knows she's going to feel better when she leaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, also commented about how willingly she was ready to go with Adrian to go receive her laser when, you know, she's a little bit more nervous dog. So mm -hmm. the owner had noticed a difference because she's really think it's helping her at this point. And that's a dog that's just um, was receiving her third therapy. Okay. And so it's really in that induction phase where we're treating that dog for arthritis. And so we're doing kind of every other day um, for a series of up, up to six. And then when they reach a plateau point, which means that we're no longer seeing improvement after the therapy, then that's when we'll start to space those, th those treatments out. And then it's a maintenance type thing. And then, yeah, we kind of work towards a mm -hmm. maintenance. So we might go um, every other day for the first four treatments and then well maybe we, we're not seeing as much improvement so we might go maybe from every other day maybe every three three to four days and then maybe work out to once a week and then all, most of our maintenance are, are running between uh, once every three three to four weeks. How we, long have you had this? this um, we got the laser in July of last year and it's, it's a technology that's been in veterinary medicine um, for several years prior to that. It started um, <clears throat> and actually actually gained FDA approval in 2005 for human medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that is used uh, widely amongst veterinarians um, and is becoming a newer technology that's being used in, in human medications. How many um, dogs do you have presently getting laser? Give me just a guess. Mm. Five? Four? More than that. Do you have an idea off handy? Do you have any idea how many you've done um. since you really started doing it? Uh, we, we just looked at some information on that the other day, and I don't know. I just wondered how uh, how many people were take, taking. There's, you know, there's there's a, a lot of them that are the older patient, and so they're in for those repeated sessions sure, sure. Um, versus those ones, hey, my dog's got a bad ear infection. Let's, mm -hmm. I really want to get her some relief. Or um, Sophie first started out because her anal glands were so bad and it was so inflamed that we're, we're dealing with the primary problem and getting those expressed and getting the infection under control. But she really saw a lot of relief after that first laser mm -hmm. treatment that, that we had used on her. I think uh, one of my cats that I brought down uh, had been in a fight or whatever and mm -hmm. had an abscess, right? Correct. And you used it on that and there were... Mm -hmm. Very, very quick recovery. Yes, we've, we've actually seen um, in a lot of our, our routine surgeries, we talked about using that immediately and you know, the animal's recovering from the anesthesia mm -hmm. and that we're actually using it during that, that period. Wow. And um, we have had one of our technicians that just commented about, you know, this wound looks like it's five days old and it was the night of surgery. Right. And, and so it's, it really does speed the healing process. Um, we've had other patients that we've had... Uh, in oral hematoma, which means that the, ins the inside layers of that ear fills with blood. And so we did a surgery to open and drain that, but also the laser can help to speed the healing process. And um, this individual patient, she didn't use it until much later on in the therapy because mm -hmm. her ear just wasn't healing like it should. She was an older patient and her body was having some other conditions okay. going on that affected her healing levels. And one, after one treatment of the laser, her ear was, was healed up and, and doing much better. Do we have an option, let's say that I see a veterinarian that doesn't have this. Mm -hmm. Can, and that veterinarian knows that you do have it, do you ever have referrals that come here just for this? 
Um, from another veterinarian clinic. I know a lot of veterinarian clinics have this, but I know some that probably don't. Right. Yeah, it's definitely something that, that we'll see, and it typically, um, if it's that kind of a situation, we'll have just an initial consultation, make okay. sure that we know where, where we're treating, make sure that the diagnostic workups we're treating mm -hmm. the right, right sites, um, and also make sure that the client is educated on the technology and you know where, what to expect and, and where we're, we're going with the treatments that way. Adrian, is so. there anything we've forgotten except for the fact that Maggie has now decided to leave us? <laughs> And she's probably never coming back. <laughs> Get a no. treat out, she'll be back. No, honestly, is there anything that we have not spoken about? Step back this way so Kevin yeah. still has you in his uh, view here. But what are some things, is there anything else that you would want people to know? Um, that um, laser therapy is very um, safe. Um, we do it, we recommend it. It can be every day. Do we need these now? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. We can... Um, <laughs> Depends on what protocol. We can do it every day, depending on the condition, mm -hmm. or every other day. Um, but your question about, we have three that are um, repeaters that come back. Mm -hmm. They're in the maintenance program. Some are in the, three, you know, in the third session of maintenance programs. A lot of the arth um, arthritic patients. Good. But Anything else, Dr. Becky, we should add? I, mean, I think it's great. And I, we certainly want to bring as many things like this as possible to the people who watch our programs because this is an alternative and it seems to be having tremendous right. results. Yeah, it, if you wanted just to kind of uh, oh, take yes, a I trial and yeah. let our viewers know what it feels like. I put my glasses back on, don't I? <laughs> yes, you do, unfortunately. I think so, I'm ready for this. I'm um, not sure. Can I trust you? <laughs> yes, you okay. can trust me. Do we have to put water on my hand first? I'll probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll just treat you like my regular patients. I treat me like your regular patients. <laughs> If I woof, 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 I'll... Okay. Okay, I'm just going to put a little water on there. Okay, she's going to do my left thumb. And I did mention this This is something that's been used in human medicine. Um, not enough, though, doggone it. Not enough. There's there's no place in the immediate area that I have found that has, has this technology. Um, I know there's some places down around Pittsburgh. Um, chiropractor, maybe. Or some uh, chiropractors yeah. and, and some physical therapy. Um, Thanks. In, uh, uh, places as well that they will they will sometimes offer this. Um, <clears throat> just Maggie's I back. Know. She's trying to I talk know. me Shaggy. out of this. Now, when you were touching that, you know what? Yeah. I could feel a little bit of tingling <laughs> up towards my thumb. Why would that be? We don't it's know. It's just it's stimulating the the, stimulating. the tissues that's gotcha. there. Um, you know, the the laser is there. Uh, it it can stimulate the nerves. It can help with increasing nerve function. Uh, I thought maybe areas. he was trying to hurt me. <laughs> It also oh, there is heat that comes off. Mm -hmm. there. There's yeah, a little bit of warmth to it typically. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something that we've really reached for. I mentioned that we use this in cats um, because there's not a, there's not a lot of medications that we can use to manage chronic pain in cats. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's very nice for that. But we've also had several um, of our, our canine patients that either they're they're battling a liver problem or they're battling a kidney problem. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the medications that we use for arthritis aren't, aren't the best when we're having, we know we have those problems going on. And so some of those patients have actually been transitioning from their medications for their arthritis to just the laser therapy. And we've had a few patients that have actually um, gotten off of their medications altogether so that we don't have to worry about the side effects of medications. Um, with the laser, there's really very few side effects that we, that we see. Yeah. Um, any, you know, sometimes it's maybe a little skin irritation uh, if, if we have one patient that might be a little more sensitive than others to that. I talked to someone the other day that uh, is getting laser therapy for their dog at, I think maybe it was at Greener Pastures, and they're just thrilled to death. I think, again, it's a 12 or 13-year-old lab. Mm -hmm. Difficulty with the back hips and things like that, and they just couldn't be happier with it. So it certainly is uh, proving to be a good thing. I'm I certainly have been talking it up a lot, and I really, as I said, have a lot of people that I know that deal with those doggone hot spots. Or that right. licking. What's that called? Lick, lick granulomas. And that's, and that's where they lick their feet? Or whatever, when they eat the bottom of their feet. It's, it's, those are often um, can be related to some allergies. Okay. Sometimes a lick granuloma can be something that even starts as a nervous habit or maybe at a site of a, of a recent wound, and they start licking that wound, and then the licking inflames the skin, so then they continue to lick. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and we've had several of those that have just you know, really, really just healed up, which mm -hmm. is something that's been typically hard for us to manage, and it's um, almost always a chronic problem when they get started to, to try to get sounds those to great. resolve. Sounds like a great alternative. Sounds Absolutely. like something that certainly is worthwhile trying and looking into. I would urge everybody that is watching to, of course, you're always free to contact Connie Lake Vet because that's where I'm right now, and they're helping us out with this programming. But also check with your vet and see whether or not it's an option. If it's not an option there, 
consider giving them a call down here or check around and see if you can find some places doing it because I think it'll be to your advantage with your dog. Yes, we've, we've definitely seen a lot of uh, a lot of improvement and a lot of animals mm -hmm. that are doing very well because of it. So, well, thanks very very much. My thumb will probably never be the same. <laughs> should be better. It should be, should better. be better. You think yeah. it'll work better than it ever did before? For a while. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. That's encouraging. So. Uh, again, thank you very very much, Dr. Becky and Adrian. Thank you, and we thank uh, Maggie and Sophie's gone. <laughs> she got out of Dodge wearing her <laughs> goggles probably. But thanks very much for doing the program. I really appreciate it. Again, we're Connie on Lake Vet here on uh, 322, right past Walmart at the bottom of Gable Hill. Isn't it Correct. Gable Hill? Yep. And uh, give them a call if you have some questions and you want to get your dog involved in this, or at the very, very least, uh, check with your own vet and see whether or not they provide the services. And if not, consider giving them a call down here, and you can probably deal with Dr. Becky Stanton or Dr. Wendy Wade, or they can deal with Adrian. Adrian, give me your last name one more time. Victorio. Victorio. I got it. Okay, thank you very much and hope to see you again. Thank you.